Northern governors and crucial meeting in Kaduna condemn agitation for secession and prevalent communal clashes in parts of the country. APC national chairman says no secrecy in President Muhammadu Buhari's health status with confirmation by party leaders and governors who visited. Minister of Power, Works and Housing refutes incitement allegation against the National Assembly. And tragedy on Kogi Highway as many got burnt beyond recognition in a multiple road accident in Lokoja. Hello and a very warm welcome to NTA Network News. I am Laureba Lahassan here in Abuja. And Jennifer Igwe is in our Lagos studio. The Northern Governors Meeting has ended in Kaduna with a call on Nigerians to avoid instigative comments on social media that is capable of undermining the existing peace in the country. The meeting also condemned the agitation for secession and prevalence of communal clashes experienced in some parts of the country. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. The 19 Northern Governors Forum meeting, which was held behind closed doors, lasted for hours. But while briefing journalists at the end of the meeting, the governors frowned at the increasing cases of kidnapping, sectarian clashes, instigative comments on national issues on the social media platforms, as well as child destitution. Northern state governments will soon access loans from the IDB for the sole purpose of building bilingual schools that will address the issue of Armageddon in northern Nigeria. Investment in education takes a generation to show results. Many of us are beneficiaries of the investment in education of Sahano Dibedo. With regard to security issues, a report came before the meeting that Kamuku Forest and hosts of others in the region have been taken over by armed bandits. A meeting therefore appealed to the federal government to relinquish maintenance of forest reserve to the states and increase the capabilities of the Nigerian police force to fight criminals. It is pertinent to also ensure that the funds and the operational equipment allocated to our security agencies cascade down to all the various common structures at the state level. The fate of the NNDC and new Nigerian newspapers was discussed as a meeting resolved to hold an extraordinary meeting that will explore ways of reviving the company to a modern media outfit. The governors condemned the deadly communal clashes in Benue, Kajuru, and the recent attack of NMPC and University of Meduguri staff in Borno State. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. And I'm now being joined by the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture, Kaduna State, Professor Kabiru Matu from our Kaduna studio. Network News. Talking about increasing cases of kidnapping and communal clash, top agenda at the Northern Governors meeting. Beyond the efforts being made by security agencies, what else do we need to do? agencies in themselves are not really in a position to deal with the situation decisively. I think the position that uh, the Northern Governors are taking by creating uh, employment opportunities for self-reliance, teaming young people in the region uh, is, uh, uh, in my view, the best option that, uh, you know, needs to be taken uh, so that a lot of these otherwise unemployed and therefore frustrated young people are taking off uh, the present, you know, socioeconomic conditions that they find themselves in, uh, you know, uh, to, to a more profitable and uh, perhaps uh, worthy uh, you know, living condition. Uh, so side by side with the desire to um, you know, intensify efforts by the security agencies in addressing the problem, I think uh, you know, a del deliberate political decision uh, must be taken as it's been proposed by the Northern Governors uh, to ensure that a teaming, you know, a lot of uh, these uh, sometimes very qualified young people that are out of jobs uh, are engaged positively uh, as a strategy of reducing, you know, the frustration and social tension that usually results in either 
the issue of communal clashes, as was discussed, or even the issue of, uh, you know, and social activities such as kidnapping, arm robbery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, the the economic dimension, which obviously forms the kernel of the discussions by the northern governors, in my view, will go a long way in, uh, you know, addressing the problem, uh, which obviously, uh, you know, will sincerely uh, uh, result in perhaps uh, a more. Of, um the development of uh, northern Nigeria is no doubt paramount in the minds of the governors. What is the current efforts like? The, 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 the fact, like I said, is that, you know, in, in the north, what, what uh, most of the states are blessed with is the, uh, you know, abundance in, in land resources and very fertile for that matter. So agriculture is one area, especially those of us in Kaduna State, the government has spent, you know, is paying tremendous attention in the area of engaging the minds of young people by changing the narrative of what agriculture is all about so that people now engage in farming, and then so they can be self-reliant and, you know, uh, take away the, uh, you know, previous uh, notion that uh, when you go to school, the, the only way you can begin fully employed is when you uh, secure a white-collar job. So I, I believe that the best that the governors are doing and that they can do more uh, is to continue to emphasize on the need for self-reliance by taking away the attention of uh, younger minds from uh, you know, the previously held erroneous belief that agriculture, uh, for instance, was an occupation that, uh, you know, is, uh, is reserved for either those who did not go to school or those who are living in the villages and, and the countryside. Uh, so I, I believe that, uh, you know, the APC administration, both at the center and in several states uh, uh, of the country, especially in the northern part of this country, uh, are paying a lot of, you know, premium on the need uh, to engage our youth in agriculture, and once uh, they are busy, then they don't become idle minds, and uh, you know they have something to protect, and uh, therefore the propensity of uh, tilting towards crime and criminality will uh, sufficiently be addressed. Many thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. Yes. I've been speaking your with the with Commissioner us. for I've Agriculture, Kaduna State, Professor Kabiru Mato. Moving on now, there has been further confirmation that President Muhammad Buhari is recovering fast and would soon return to work immediately his doctors give the go-ahead. This is coming from the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Chief Odige Oyegun, who was part of the first delegation that visited pre the President in London. He spoke to newsmen at the party's National Secretariat in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. The APC chairman led leaders of the party and some governors on the first visit, and since their return to the country and similar visit paid by another set of governors, including those from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Chief Oyegun says there has been sufficient information on Mr. President's health to the public. I want to confirm that yes, Mr. President is convalescing very, very strongly right now. All he's doing is having as much rest as he can to build up his energy, to build up his stamina. And uh, that is it, but the worst is certainly over. He advised those spreading hate speeches on President Buhari's health to exercise caution, stressing that the president will be back stronger to deliver efficient and effective leadership to Nigerians who overwhelmingly brought him to office. In another development, the 10-member APC Constitution Review Committee has submitted its report to the national chairman. It has become quite clear that there are aspects of it that were either not practical or needed to be rethought. Most of the amendments we are suggesting here, put in place, we give, we strengthen our party. Some of the aspirants in the forthcoming Anambra gubernatorial election were also at the party secretariat to return their nomination forms. Everybody with the right uh, mental attitude must know that only one person will win it. So it's not a do or die affair. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NTN News. And turning our attention now to the legislature. 
Following a resolution at the House of Representatives, the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, has appeared before a House ad hoc committee to respond to various allegations. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that among these were claims that legislators have a stark knowledge of the budgetary process, thereby inciting the public to view the National Assembly in a negative light. The allegations came in the wake of an interview that the minister had granted on issues of national importance with particular reference to infrastructural development. Fashola has made no secret of his belief that the budgetary process needs improvements and he explains his position, indicating that his statements were taken out of context. Sir, I take the view that saying that, which is already a matter of public record, uh, is with respect not an incitement of the public against parliament. I did not say so of legislators as a whole. I did not. What I said was with respect to the spokesperson who responded to my interview. He subsequently apologized to members for any unintended offense, and the matter concluded on a positive note. He apologized for it, and I think that is very good for me from the minister. And I can assure the honorable minister that the National Assembly will give him every assistant needed for him to succeed in his current job. The National Assembly is ready to accept the supplementary budget from the executive so that we can give you backup and approval to go ahead with your building. I'm so happy that at the end of the day, reconciliation becomes the um, new order of the day. The interactions later focused on priority projects, including those that President Mohamedou Buhari had highlighted and efforts the ministry is making to achieving these. The committee expressed commitment to assisting the ministry towards achieving its mandate for economic development and overall benefit of Nigerians. From the National Assembly, Dennis Adigunlui, NTA News. The House of Representatives Committee on Health Care Services says it will put the consideration of the 2017 budget of the National Health Insurance Scheme on hold until the minister appears before the committee as resolved by the House to explain his reasons for suspending the former executive secretary of the agency, Professor Usman Yusuf. The chairman of the committee, Representative Chike Okafo, said this at a public hearing where the committee discharged the acting executive secretary of NHIS, Ibrahim Atahiru, with the condition that the committee will only scrutinize the NHIS budget if the Minister of Health appears before the committee. I have the 2016 appropriation and then they give me warrant for the initial release and then for the uh, uh, second additional release. Then I have the 2016 uh, budget performance, the details of payments. The NHIS team, you would have to leave us at this point. We have not looked at your budget because the House says we don't have to look at your budget. Get it very clear. We are looking at the issues and crises and we have also got involved until we get to the resolution which the climax of it will be the minister coming before us as resolved by the House. And away from the legislature, a report reaching us from Lokoja in Kogi State says more than 10 persons were burnt beyond recognition in a multiple road accident which occurred around Filele in the outskirts of Lokoja. Solomon Ayedeng reports that some pictures in the report might be disturbing. Viewer discretion is therefore advised. The accident involved two trucks conveying petroleum products and 18 seater bus and a tricycle. Eyewitness accounts reveal that the accident occurred when the drivers of the vehicles attempted to avoid a pothole on the highway. When those vehicles are coming and they lose their control. In the process of trying to maneuver their way, they find it difficult to do that. They lose control. And because of those bad spots. It has happened again and again. Road safety personnel and other security agents were on ground for rescue operation. We cannot ascertain how many people, but 10 people have been born to born beyond recognition and are about uh, six injured. Governor Yahya Belo visited the scene of the accident and appealed for early completion of Lokoja Okene Dry Carriageway. Federal Ministry of Works 
that mobilize the contractor handling the dualization of this road. They should come and complete their job as quickly as possible. The state government, he also said, will take necessary measure to prevent a reoccurrence of such accidents. In Lokoja, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. And the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, and the Nigerian Psychological Association, NPA, are collaborating towards achieving the implementation of its psychological and emotional test policy. FRSC Corps Marshal Bobuye Uyeyemi, while receiving members of Psychiatrist Association at the Corps headquarters in Abuja, says the time for all road users to imbibe total road safety culture is now. Uyeyemi Ajayi reports. On July 1, 2017, the Federal Road Safety Corps launched a policy tagged psycho-emotional test for traffic offenders. On this basis, road users violated road safety rules such as using mobile phones while driving, routine violation, overloading and speeding, as well as beating traffic lights, will be subjected to emotional and psychiatric evaluation. Towards the evaluation of the policy, the FRSE has been meeting with relevant stakeholders. There are some that we have caused on the highway to park. We check the man has slept off while he's been checked to fatigue. We just have to join hands. Dr. Taiwo Latif Sheikh, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Kaduna, says the move is expedient since the psychological state of an individual is a major determinant to how he or she behaves while on the road. Even when we say we are Function erratic people, it's all in the course of preventing these things from happening. So, we thank you for seeing us, worthy partners, to be able to carry this out. He promises the support of the Nigerian Psychological Association to help FRSE achieve its mandate. In Abuja, Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. And to security matters now. In providing strategic level training for senior officers of the nation's armed forces, the provision of adequate infrastructural facility is an important contributing factor. This is the view of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Oloni Shaking, at the inauguration of some projects executed by the National Defense College, NDC, in Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. The project inaugurated comprised participants' quarters too at the college permanent site, Piwoi, along Airport Road, and the civilian staff quarters, Guarimpa. Work started on the participants' quarters too in 2009, while that of the 12th number two bedroom flats for staff commenced in 2016 to cater for the accommodation challenge of the college. Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Oloni Shaki, said it is heartwarming to note that the college has shown great commitment through the projects in actualizing its desire to relocate to the permanent site. The college has attained a very high reputation in the 25 years of its existence, given the recognition it has earned among similar strategic training institutions worldwide. We will continue to ask for more to enable the college to complete the remaining structures in line with 2017 budget estimates. The inauguration ceremony is part of activities to mark the Silver Jubilee celebration of the National Defense College. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Cross River State Governor Ben Ayade has restated his administration's commitment to building hope and alleviating the sufferings of the Bakasi returnees. Udwak Etim reports. The governor explained that the choice of the new location is based on the traditional heritage and means of livelihood with particular interest on protecting the boundaries and promised to give them hope for a better tomorrow. Governor Yade called on the federal government to focus more on the people to give them a better and quality life care. People of Bakasi are exposed and are the mercy of the well-equipped Cameroon gendarmes. Being sent out again in very inhuman condition and we had to start providing accommodation and feeding for them to be able to stay here before they start finding their places to their respective states. The paramount ruler of Bakasi local government area and chairman traditional rulers council, Etinyang Etimo Konedet, described the new location as most preferred and lauded the state government for its effort to building a new home for the IDPs.
We love the environment, we like where we are. We thank the community for what they have done and we do hope that the federal government will now respond positively. The youths also applauded the state government for its approach to give them hope and called for proper documentation on the land with a view to paying compensation to the indigents to avoid another dislocation. From Bakasi local government area of Cross River State, Udwak Etam, NTA News. And you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Ruling APC gains more ground in Yobe State as members of opposition decamp to the party. This and more shortly. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office, and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hostels, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices, to bring about change we must change ourselves by being low abiding students. Hi Tracy, what's my flight number? Tracy, do you have a phone I can use? This is so old school. Try this. There's no network on him. What about this one? Seriously? Does anybody have 4G here? Um. Hello, madam. Hi. There you go. Thank <laughs> you. Wow, it's ultra fast. Of course, it's Glow 4G LTE turbocharged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you are super fly. Thank, Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Bye. Glow 4G LTE. Need to sit next to him on the flight. These data plans are available to all new customers and existing customers who renew their plans. Dial star triple seven. Welcome to the new speed of life. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Fika and Chairman, Yobe State Council of Chiefs, and Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, cordially invites the general public to the 314 million naira appeal fund for the restructuring, remodeling, and expansion of Botiskum Central Mosque. Date Saturday, July 29, 2017. Venue Emir of Fika's Palace, Botiskum. Time 10 a.m. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, Al Haji Ibrahim Gaida. Guest of honor, Al Haji Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindo. Barrister Muhammadu Abdullahi Abubakar, Al Haji Kashim Shetima, Al Haji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwambo, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Chief Host Al Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, Emir of Fika, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar the Third. Chief Lodger, Al Haji Aliko Dangote, Chairman of the Occasion, Malam Adamuchi Roma, Mada Kinfika, Guest Speakers, Sheikh Tijani Bala Kalara Wikano, Sheikh Muhammad Kabiru Haruna Gombe, Announcer, Chairman, Organizing Committee, Al Haji Baba Baba, Demasani Fika. <laughs> hey, now who they here? My name now, Mr. Shortcut. I demand my money. Now cheap cheap one at the buy. From that, we say. Now to buy cheap one. <laughs> hey, now what can keep on for my yard? A cheap building material where we take build my office. I just say I deserve money. Office building collapse. And fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, S-O-N, don't ready for action and say enough of pain, loss and wastage. And if you see product where no day correct, call the S-O-N office when near you. Or S-O-N app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. Wow. August meeting is here again. 
Imolites, get ready for an awesome time. As Her Excellency Ugo Noma Nkechinocha Zogroja, PhD, welcomes women from all walks of life to Imo for August meeting 2017. With a theme, women, building bridges of friendship across the Niger. So, on the 3rd of August 2017, Imo will be on the center stage at Zero Square. It will be a gog with thousands of Imolites and Nigerians to welcome the special guest of honor and mother of the day, Her Excellency, Hajia Aisha Buhari, wife of the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Time, 9 a.m. Convener, Her Excellency, Ugo Norma Nkechiro Chasukrocha, PhD, Chief Host. His Excellency Owele Anayo Rochazukrocha, the Executive Governor of Imo State, 2017 August meeting. Come, let's promote peaceful coexistence, very strength in unity. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country just away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Welcome back. This is NTA Network News. And on the political scene, some members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Yobe State, have defected to the Governing All Progressives Congress, APC. Governor Ibrahim Gaidam joined the leadership of the APC in the state in receiving them. Mustafa Yusuf Musa reports. It is indeed a gathering of solidarity, loyalty, and commitment of purpose in the course of the All Progressive Congress in Yobe State as high-profile politicians from the People's Democratic Party joined the ruling party. Receiving the new entrant into the APC, Governor Ibrahim Gaidam, and the APC National Secretary, Alajme Malabuni, told them to feel at home as the APC in Yobe State will provide them with level playing field. The large turnout of our supporters here today is a clear indication that our party is working stronger and stronger day by day in our state and Nigeria in support. They all agreed that discipline, loyalty, and unity is what hold the APC in Yobe State and therefore advise the new entrant to key into the existing political structure on ground. In their remarks, the former Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Al Haji Jibun Megari, former member, Board of Trustees, acted Shetima Mohamed Saleh, and former minority leader, Yobe State House of Assembly, Abdullah Adamubazwa, said they were attracted to join the APC due to the good leadership qualities of Governor Ibrahim Gaidam. In Dematru, I am Mustafa Yusuf Musa, NTA News. The wife of the president, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, has reaffirmed her commitment to supporting women and children in Nigeria for sustainable growth and development. Mrs. Buhari stated this in a message through the senior special assistant to the president, Dr. Hajusani, when she received delegation of the Center for African Peace and Conflict Resolution of the California State University, USA, at the presidential villa, Abuja. State House correspondent Aliu Kaber reports. The delegation of the California State University Center for African Peace and Conflict Resolution, led by the director of the center, Professor Ernest Uwazi, was at the State House to seek for partnership with the wife of the President Aisha Muhammad Buhari in the areas of peace building, especially amongst women, women and youth empowerment gender equality among others which is aligned with the sustainable development goals number 5 10 and 16 and this is um, uh, geared toward more of kind of transformative uh, you know systems uh, development 
um, that is sustainable. Briefing the delegation on the activities and the achievement of the Future Assured Program of the Wife of the President in promoting health and the general well-being of women and children in Nigeria, especially in the areas of maternal and child health, as well as nutrition matters, the senior special assistant to the president who stood in for Mrs. Buhari assured the delegation of a smooth working relationship in enhancing the welfare of women and that of children. As far as uh, empowerment of women and youth are concerned, which is another segment of a uh, uh, future assured program, she organizes and um, across the, uh, the, the states in the country empowerment programs whereby women and youth are taught vocational skills. She expressed the desire for expanding the scope to explore other areas of mutual interest for the benefit of women and children in Nigeria and the rest of the African continent. From the State House, Ali Ukebir, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Muhammad says the federal government will not be intimidated to rescind its decision to amend the National Broadcasting Code. The minister stated this when he granted audience to Nigeria's delegation to the African Union's Economic Socio-Cultural Council in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. The Economic, Social and Cultural Council of the African Union is one of the organs of the Union whose membership is drawn from the civil society, and part of its mandate is to promote African cultural heritage. It is on this account that the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohamed, said one of the cardinal policies of the present administration is to diversify the economy and grow the creative industry. The whole idea is to protect local creative talent and make sure that it grows, create employment for our people, if we are not going to export jobs to other countries and expect our economy to grow. Yes, there are no studios in Nigeria because nobody is going to invest in Nigeria. If the law allows you to go and do the same thing outside Nigeria. To members of the AU's ECOSOC, the minister enjoined them to see themselves as Nigeria's ambassadors to the council and therefore must promote Nigeria's image. I appreciate the single-mindedness of this administration to rescuing the country from the abyss where we find ourselves. The minister expressed satisfaction with the fact that so far they have done Nigeria proud by bidding and getting the hosting right for the African Festival of Arts and Culture bill for November this year. Earlier, members of the delegation in their separate submissions informed the minister of the benefits Nigeria stands to gain in hosting the continental event. We want to team up with the office because we need to popularize this, we need to sensitize people, we need to market it and take it down to the grassroots. With this event, we are going to build African Festival City. The members, however, appealed to the minister to press for more benefits from AU by the federal government as the biggest contributor to the union in Abuja, Antony Forsen, NTA News. And now to education. Showing positive attitude to children is one sure way to bring out the innate potentials in them. Professor of Educational Psychology stated this at the 26th lecture series of the University of Abuja. Abdullahi Musa Suleja has details. Statistics have shown that about 10 million children are out of school in Nigeria. While some are out or drop out for lack of money to pursue or proceed, others are slow learners desirous of good schools to improve their performance. Professor Joseph Bakobadu, who spent over four decades in the teaching profession starting from primary school, spoke on intellectualism, its anatomy, and midwifing. Professor Badu said the nation in the past recorded some positive actions in the education sector, but that presently the sector is at crossroads due to so many factors. But again, he listed some factors such as poor maternal care and stimulation and absence of harmony between the schools and the home that affect the child's academic achievement. Children's intelligence can be boosted and enhanced through a well-planned and guided curriculum and Nigeria shall be better for it. Vice Chancellor of the University of Abuja, Professor Michael Adeku, commanded the intellectualism of the dawn, a requisite that elevates him to the professorial calling. Abdullahi Musa Sulija.
NTA News. Old Girls Association of Federal Government Girls College, Bakwori in Katsina State, have converged on Abuja with the desire of giving back not only to their alma mater, but to the society at large. Salih Abdullahi was at the inaugural reunion and now reports. In a high morale, the group commends the work from the Unity Fountain and terminated at the headquarters of National Universities Commission. With placards, the old girls make their messages clear in determination to support in ongoing efforts by the government to improve the quality of girl child education in Nigeria. And the theme is securing the environment for the girl child education. Uh, so the essence is to create awareness that out there, there are people who care. There are people who really want to say, look, the state of education is, is sorry. We need to do something about it. They believe now is the time to inject those values learned while at FGGC Bakuri into the society having attained successes in their various endeavor. They said distance will never serve as a barrier as we have among the Bakurians are those in the diaspora. I work to build confidence in girls, in women, to make sure that they have the right mindset for success. I'm here to support my um, fellow Bakurians. Concerned about the state of affairs in Nigeria, especially the education sector, the old girls want government at all levels to take urgent steps towards improving girl child education. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And our first port of call is the Center of Excellence, where Jennifer is standing by with more reports. Hello, Jennifer. It's over to you. Larry, a warm welcome to Lagos. After spending 64 days in kidnappers' den, six students abducted at Lagos School on May 25th have been set free today, says police authorities. The students were abducted by gunmen at the school premises um, at the Lagos State Model College, Igbonla, in a queer area of the state. According to the police, they were handed over to officials of the school at about 3 p.m. Details of this will be brought to you in a subsequent bulletin. Now, in its quest to promote bilateral business and investment activities between Nigeria and Britain, the Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce has appointed the Chief Executive Officer of Fidelity Bank PLC, Namdi Okonkwo, as its new Vice President. Annie Daniels reports that this was announced during the Chamber's 38th Annual General Meeting and Investiture in Lagos. The appointment of Namdi Okonkwo was announced during the unveiling of the newly inaugurated Executive Council, led by Akin Olawore, President and Chairman of the Council. Namde Okonkwa is expected to bring to bear his over 25 years of experience in the corporate world. The government is very keen now on ease of doing business. They want us to go up by 20 steps. Fine. So what are the challenges that we are having? What are the things that we need to do? What are our partners telling us? So all of this we will then need to put together and sit down with government and see how it can work. Not to the detriment of the country, but to improve the overall uh, governance of the country. Responding, Nnamdi Okonkwo expressed the lights at the honor. He disclosed that the chamber will play critical roles in strengthening economic development, adding that with his position as new vice president, members will be assisted in business creation and growth, as well as be kept abreast of relevant policies. Uh, what this means is increased cooperation between the bank and the um, Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce, as well as increased cooperation between our mutual customers and obviously for furtherance of uh, commercial activities. Okonkwa's position is valid until 2019. The Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce pledges to remain the foremost bilateral chamber in Lagos. Annie Daniels, NTA News. MTN Foundation appreciated and honored nominators who recommended their communities for invention projects in the phase two of the What Can We Do Together initiative. Miriam Emeka Amachi has the details. Foundation's What Can We Do Together is an initiative of MTN to improve the quality of lives of people in communities across the country. The foundation caters for educational health and social needs of the people, ranging from donation of school furniture, transformers, drilling of boreholes in communities in dire need of these amenities. 
For you to be a successful nominator, you have about eight things to hurdles to go over. You have to have the vision. We've spent over 1.1 billion for the first and second phase. And we have a total of 400 communities you know, since 2015. People lauded the initiative through goodwill messages, including the Deputy Senate President, Ike Ekwaremado, who is a nominator. For those of us who are in the parliament, it means a lot because we live every day for our constituents. And any opportunity to change their, their lives makes a lot of uh, meaning to us. Those of you that have nominated projects and that have made sure that the MPM Foundation is able to identify good causes that they can access, you have made those blessings count. Awards were presented to nominators for communities in northern states. But the idea of What Can We Do Together initiative was launched in 2015 in Abuja. Miriam Emekamadi, NTA News. Develop effective templates for monitoring public funds to attain strict implementation of the budget as the Registrar Institute of Criminal Justice and Criminology Administration advocates stiffer sanction for misappropriation of public funds as panacea for economic growth. Amechi Payos has details on our business news segment. Glad to have you join us on business news. As the federal government proposes about a trillion naira budget for 2018, the president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Professor Shegu Ajibola, has emphasized the need for government to be more proactive in developing effective templates for managing public funds and implementing policies of government. He said the challenge for government is not sourcing funds for implementing the budget, but building capacity to check failure and risk of non-performance. So if we can be more proactive, in following through policies and programs, in holding people accountable for whatever they do. I think the benefits will go more to the masses, the economy as a whole will benefit more, and we will see the impact on growth and development. For the Institute of Criminal Justice and Criminology Administration, until appropriate sanctions are enforced, chances of the nation achieving full implementation of the budget will remain a mirage. You don't come to the pages of the newspaper on news media, you accuse somebody, you have done this, you have done that. Prosecute the person and convince the person. But when you prosecute a, 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 a looter who has been alleged or been accused of being corrupt and his, his guilty as charged and jailed, it will serve as a deterrent to others. Nigerians wishing to take advantage of the federal government's U Win program can now do so on www.uwinconnect.org.ng. Applicants are advised to disregard any website that offers alternative link for the U Win Connect registration, demanding for money to facilitate the process. U Win Connect is an annual program of the federal government which prepares qualified ventures for funding. And here are details of movement of stocks at the close of trading on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange today. Market capitalization was 12.70 trillion naira, while the all share index finished at 36,864.71 points. A total of 525.59 million shares were traded at 8.13 billion naira in 5,799 deals. And at the commodities market, market watchers say the frequent rainfall experienced in the country early in the year has led to increase in prices of some food items in the market mostly affected are tomatoes yam and plantain other staples like gari reduced in cost due to the season and that's business news thanks for being a part of it thank you amichi you're still on to ntn network news more reports ahead after this timeout please stay with us this must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Reorganized trained and fully equipped we are 
the new improved Nigeria police force. We fight Nasima. crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria police force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. Nigerians. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Welcome back. You're still watching NTA Network News. Acting President Yemi Oshinbaju says government would continue to pay attention to private investors because of the Buhari administration's avowed position that the private sector remains key to the growth of the nation's economy. The acting president was speaking when he received a delegation of the Nigerian Association of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. State House correspondent Jide Unifadi has details. Explaining the reason government sees the private sector as important to the nation, acting president Yemi Oshimbajo said private investment is only triples the combined budget of the federal government and the states. The business of government, the acting president noted, is to ensure that the environment is controlled in such manner that would make business to thrive. President of the Nigeria Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Iyalote Alabalosin, commended government for its various economic reforms. He's moving along the line and working together with the organized private sector to ensure that our economy and gross domestic uh, products GDP is going well. She urged government to ensure passage of the budget in time and the absolute implementation of the economic reforms. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. The National Assembly has stated that the demutualization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange will reinforce the capital market to significantly contribute to Nigerian economic development. This came up at a one-day public hearing by the joint session of the Senate and House Committee on Capital Market and Institutions. National Assembly correspondent Ifine Ezumba reports. The bill seeks to facilitate the expeditious conversion and re-registration of the Nigerian Stock Exchange from a company limited by guarantee to a public company limited by shares in order to adopt and efficiently implement the global best practice of the demutualization of stock exchange. The Senate President Bukola Saraki in a message said it aims amongst other amendments to promote efficiency in the creation and harnessing of capital as well as creating liquidity in the market. With easy access to the internet, we can effortlessly carry our trade from any part of the world. This bill is only a rubber stamp and an activation of the process of demutualization. The Federal Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and all the stakeholders say it is a welcome development that will provide access to global capital market. In its current form, the NSC is subject to several legal restrictions. Out of 64 members of the World Federation of Exchanges, which have demutualized, the dynamism presented by a demutualized exchange would augment Nigeria's debt profile and capital raising capabilities. According to the World Federation of Exchanges, 
more than 85% of all stock markets in the world have demutualized by 2015. Our research also shows that 85% of World Federation of Exchange member, members have been demutualized by July of 2017. The bill stakeholders say when passed into law, the Nigerian Stock Exchange will transform from a mutual company to a demutualized company where ownership will be separated and there will be a regulatory structural framework. From the National Assembly, Ifani Isumba, continues. Determined to increase the pace of rural development through effective governance, accountability and transparency, the Yodo State Government has held a three-day special retreat for newly elected local government officials. The orientation program and capacity building is also meant to ensure government services reach the grassroots. Muhammad Musa Askira reports. Sustained good governance and prudent management of public finances at the grassroots level for progress and development is one of the cardinal objectives of the Governor Ibrahim Gaidam's administration. It is in line with this that the Yobe State Government gathered experts in various critical sectors to build the capacity of the newly elected local government officials to enhance their abilities to effectively deliver service and promote people-oriented governance. Governor Ibrahim Gaidam, who was represented by the head of service, al Haji Saleh Abubakar, urged participants to step up efforts in improving revenue generation. This is informed by the fact that the attention of our administration in recent years has been geared towards formulating and implementing aggressive and well thought out program of systematic reforms in order to reposition the various institutions. The Director News and Current Affairs in Nigeria Television Authority Al Haji Ali Ubaba Barao had in a presentation described media as an indispensable tool in ensuring accountability, transparency and good governance. The local government is a veritable platform. Where the system goes right, the media are supposed to educate and enlighten the public so that we have this symbiotic relationship between the public, the government, and the government. Various speakers urge the newly elected local government officials to concentrate on the provision of basic social amenities and rural infrastructure in Damatru, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. And Port Harcourt is our next spot of call, and Dibabari is waiting to tell us about the visit of NTA DG to Governor Nyesum Wiki. Hello, Dibabari. It's good to see you. Good evening, Laurie, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, has affirmed the commitment of the Nigerian Television Authority. NTA to serve the common interest of the government and people of Nigeria. The Director General was speaking when he paid a courtesy of visit on the Governor of River State, Yesom Mike, a government house, Port Harcourt. Ogedi Yekuri completes the story. The Director General of Nigerian Television Authority, Malan Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, said the position of the network to serve the common interest of Nigerians also means it will work assiduously in the interest of the River State government and its people to project government's program that impacts on the people. And the NTA Court should be supportive of all the activities that will further the interests of the people and government of River State. However, to be able to do this effectively, NTA Court will need the support not only of the government of River State, but of the generality of the people of River State. Governor Wike, in his response, praised the Nigerian Television Authority for its impartiality in reporting developments in the state. He was particularly happy that Nigerian Television Authority in the state has not been hostile to the government and its people, as most people would expect. You can be sure that all of us stands who want the government to, to give to you who are willing to, because we are partners in progress. Um, you have not been hostile to us. On the entourage of the Director General include the Zonal Director, NTA Port Harcourt Network Center, Nii Oyeleye, and other management staff. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwere, NTA News. And that's our beat from Port Harcourt. It's over now to Laurie for the rest of the news. Good evening. Many thanks, Diba Bari. 
and latest development from foreign and sports world when we come back. Join us again. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service, NAVDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAPDAC in reading the country of pet drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAPDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. So what's up, sweetheart? You really look like you're up to something. I have a secret. Okay. I'll be going to Europe next week. Seriously? Yeah. Like you have your visa, your, 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 your passport, your plane ticket. No, 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 not that way. So men are helping us. We pay them, they take us through the desert, and then we cross the sea into Europe. The desert, the sea. Isn't that the route where many have died? Yes, it is indeed a very dangerous journey. In 2016 alone, 4,900 people died while crossing the Mediterranean Sea to enter Europe. Many were Nigerians. For the very few who survived the journey, they are forced into prostitution or other crimes just to survive. Eventually, they will be arrested and deported to Nigeria. Don't be a victim. Don't go this way. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Welcome back to the last segment of NTA Network News. And now sports with Ayo Deji Makindi. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalun has thrown his weight behind Nigeria's bid to host the 2018 Africa Wrestling Championship after receiving President United World Wrestling Africa Fuad Mesku in Abuja Thursday. Mesku pledges to defend Nigeria's candidacy.